proportional uh, integral derivative control. Or PID control. So what we will try to do is to cover both the transient and the steady state analysis. Transient and uh, steady state. State analysis. Okay. So what we will consider is the usual uh, feedback structure. Um, so where we have essentially a plant that is being driven by a controller that we uh, label as GC of S. So the controller drives the plant, which is G of S. And the output is uh, fed back to be compared with the reference input. Okay, so we have R of S here and Y of S over here. Okay, and GC of S for uh, PID control has the general form uh, when it includes all the components is that it has first um, a proportional coefficient and then uh, a derivative coefficient multiplied by S plus a, an integral coefficient uh, multiplied by 1 over s. So these three parameters kp, kd and ki uh, are the controller parameters uh, for the general PID control. Okay, But uh, what we will try to do is to take a look at uh, these components uh, one by one in order to see um, the different effects that it has uh, they have on uh, our system behavior. Okay, So let's start with uh, proportional control okay uh, and let's assume that we have a plant model that is second order okay so uh, the plant model that we have is g of s given by uh, 1 over uh, s square plus 10s plus 20 okay so for the case of a proportional controller our controller is a simple gain okay so uh, in this case and let's try some color okay uh, we have our specific block diagram is where we have only the gain as the controller and uh, the given system plant as our uh, plant model okay okay all right So, uh, so what is the type of this system? The type is um, essentially a type 0 system, right? This is a type 0 system because it is a unity feedback system and we don't have any standalone integrators in the uh, feedforward path, okay? So the denominator of the feed forward or open loop transfer function does not have uh, any freestanding s terms okay so because this is a type 0 system we know that uh, uh, ess to a unit step unit step input is essentially uh, ess equals 1 over uh, 1 plus uh, KP, but uh, this KP is a different KP. It's not the proportional uh, coefficient of the controller, but this is our uh, positional error constant. Okay, positional error constant. 
okay what is uh maybe we shouldn't use kp for our uh, proportional control so let's maybe uh, change this okay so uh, let's make this uh, k rather than kp right so let's put here k and k here uh, in order not to confuse with the proportional error constant okay so uh, what is our kp kp is by definition uh, is limit s goes to zero uh, g of s and that is uh, basically limit s goes to zero uh, k over Uh, this g of s is the open loop uh, open loop in fact this is g c of s g of s right so let's correct that k over uh, s square plus 10 s plus 20 okay so what is this equal to if we take s going to zero these uh, terms basically cancel out uh, and we have uh, k over 20 as our kp and hence uh, we have ess that is equal to 1 over 1 plus uh, k over 20 okay and that is equal to uh, 20 over 20 plus k so that is uh, our steady state error so what we mean by that is that uh, because it's a positive number okay so what we will have is that uh, if we apply a unit step input what we will have as the output uh, will basically look something like this right so we will have second order response and then it's the oscillations will will stop eventually and at the end we will have uh, ESS a positive ESS that means the response uh, will stay below um, the reference okay we also see that uh, for this type of a system a type 0 system uh, basically the gain of the controller uh, has an effect on ESS and in fact if we increase the gain the steady state error uh, will decrease okay ESS will be reduced which is a good thing uh, by increasing increasing the gain K of the controller okay so we usually show this as uh, as such um, if gay k is increased uh, ESS will be decreased okay so k is the design parameter of the controller and ESS is the resulting uh, performance uh, parameter okay so uh, so we see that the gain has a positive effect on the steady state error but is there any uh, is there any consequences to that uh, other consequences okay uh, for example uh, what happens uh, with the transient behavior okay So uh, in order to find the transient uh, behavior, we need to look at the closed loop transfer function, the overall transfer function. Uh, in particular, the denominator uh, that uh, will give us the characteristic equation and uh, therefore the poles of the system. So let's calculate the transfer function. The overall transfer function is... Uh, well, we have the open loop here, GC of S, G of S, divided by 1 plus uh, GC of S, uh, G of S, because we don't have any, um, any block on the feedback path. Okay, so for our case, this is going to be K over 
uh, s square plus 10s plus uh, 20 and divided by 1 plus uh, k over s square plus 10s plus 20 okay and that's going to become k uh, well we will multiply with the denominator both of these terms and then we will essentially simplify the denominators so I will have here uh, sorry about that let's erase that uh, s square plus 10s plus 20 plus k okay now in order to be able to analyze this we have to make an assumption because uh, we have only studied the transient response of second order systems having the standard form the standard form was uh, omega n square over s square plus 2 psi omega n s plus omega n square so in the standard form you can see that you have uh, this term uh, equal to this term but in this case we have k in the numerator but 20 plus k uh, in the denominator okay so uh, we will assume the standard form and only consider the denominator of our transfer function uh, if you want to uh, give further detail you should basically say uh, assuming that k is somewhat larger than uh, 20 uh, we can do that okay 5 to 10 times larger is usually um, the norm okay so so what happens as we increase uh, k, okay? Uh, k is increased, okay? Uh, we see that uh, 2 psi omega n is equal to, in our uh, transfer function, uh, is equal to uh, 10 that means psi omega n is equal to 5 and is constant okay but um, we have basically uh, omega n square is equal to 20 plus k so as k is increased omega n is increased okay So if we want to sketch the pole zero diagram, uh, we see that basically psi omega n, which is the real part of the poles, psi omega n uh, is equal to, so minus psi omega n is equal to minus 5. So this is constant over here. But as I increase k, okay uh, i'm basically moving away from the origin okay so as k is increased we can see that uh, this is j omega d1 this is j omega d2 so that means omega d is increased okay uh, obviously the complex conjugate uh, happens over here as well okay so what's the effect of that uh, first of all uh, if this is our theta 1 and if this is our theta 2 we see that um, as k is increased uh, omega d is increased uh, also theta is increased okay so uh, omega d increased means uh, faster oscillations so frequency of oscillations uh, 
increase and as theta is increased right we have uh, if theta is increased we know that cosine theta is decreased therefore uh, psi is decreased and that means uh, mp percent increased okay uh, please remember uh, how the maximum overshoot relates with psi okay if we sketch uh, mp percent with respect to psi right it starts with 100 percent and then uh, goes down to zero uh, as psi ranges from uh, zero to one okay so there is an inverse relationship between uh, psi and the maximum overshoot okay um, also uh, we can also comment on other parameters for example the peak time the time uh, where uh, the oscillations the the first peak happens in the oscillations uh, of our system uh, is given by pi over omega d and this gets smaller okay so uh, peak time decreases uh, so is the rise time because it has also a relationship given by pi minus uh, theta over omega d uh, you see that um, theta increases omega d increases so theta has a negative sign so it's gonna decrease the numerator and also the denominator increasing decreases uh, essentially the the term so uh, tr also goes down as well as td sorry not td tp okay the peak time okay so uh, tp also decreases okay so if we uh, sketch uh, these two systems right as i increase kp sorry as i increase the controller gain k uh, essentially we have an exponential envelope uh, that stays the same because psi omega n product uh, stays the same but if this is your initial system right uh, that's gonna have essentially a sin damped sinusoid like this uh, as we increase k what we will have is that we will have a system that uh, that will have a faster rise time so a smaller rise time faster oscillations uh, but it's gonna be bound within the same uh, envelope okay so uh, this is our system 2 and this is our system one okay so this is our system one and this is our system two okay uh, 